Welcome everyone to uh, what will be hopefully the first of many videos um, centering around drawing within Photoshop um, primarily focusing on things like um, uh, character design, environment design but I'll also be going into other areas such as um, how to generate ideas how to um, sketch those ideas with thumbnails and um, yeah, how to get the creative process going. Um, Photoshop can be a little bit off-putting for uh, some people and particularly if they don't feel that they can draw um, as a uh, lecturer in game design uh, I've been teaching for many years and also with my background uh, working in movies um, what I've found is although I am able to draw myself and paint uh, I've been able to teach students in the past to be able to um, create without drawing. So this might seem like a perhaps a, an oxymoron, you know, the idea of actually doing character design without being able to draw. Uh, but it is possible. You can use templates. You can use uh, what's now termed as photo bashing. So you can use things like that to create. Um, yeah, character designs and environments, just using photographs and manipulating them within Photoshop. Contrary to what uh, some people might uh, be thinking, it's not really cheating. Not when you're talking about it in terms of the design process. So when you're, th when you're talking about uh, whether you're working in film or whether you're working in uh, games, uh, the idea is that is about coming up with ideas and about illustrating those ideas it's not strictly about being able to draw like Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, it's m a lot more about ideas, uh, the quality of those ideas, the communication of those ideas. So for anyone who's watching this video and thinking, I can't draw so there's no point, um, you can do it. You can create stuff. There's certain basic things that you do need to understand, a, a good knowledge of anatomy, a good knowledge of composition within environments. Of course you do need to know some things uh, but the actual technical aspect of being able to you know uh, draft really well to be able to sort of create beautiful drawings isn't strictly necessary. And if you go online you'll see some uh, character designs and environment designs that are really effective um, and they've not used any drawing at all. So um, so yeah, so I'll go more into this as the as the uh, as time goes on. But uh, for the meantime, I'm uh, uploading a video uh, that I actually did around about Christmas time. So Christmas uh, 2016, um, I decided to get back into doing a bit of uh, taking a break from my teaching and my marking to do a bit of Photoshop work. And um, yeah, so this was the kind of first and as of said uh, you know there'll be many more to come so um, I've done this in real time for you so you can see I'm going to talk over the top of it and uh, just talk about some of the tools that were used uh, within this so uh, yeah so away we go so I'm assuming watching this video you're already familiar with uh, Photoshop so you'll have opened up a, a file document and you'll have um, probably made it something like A4 and um, rotated it. So here what I'm doing is I've created a, uh, a, a layer um, and what I'm looking to do is basically first of all with the background uh, put a gradient on it um, just to create a sense uh, of some kind of background uh, that's not blank. I have a lot of students who create work on a white background. Uh, should never work that way. You always put some kind of texture on there. So what I've done is I've put a gradient on here. I've taken the smudge tool. I've put it at around about 89%. Uh, it doesn't matter particularly. I'm using brush 14 on this. And what I'm doing is I'm just kind of really just manipulating the kind of um, the gradient and creating these kind of ethereal clouds that you kind of uh, see in the background there. Uh, always kind of like altering the brush, um, not really sort of changing the uh, the strength but um, altering the brush and um, trying to create some kind of like kind of ambient cloud effects. Yeah, So you could spend a bit of time just doing this, just kind of playing around, moving it around 
and as you can see it's already quite effective I've not actually done a great deal I've just used the smudge tool I've used a gradient tool you can do this with a mouse you don't even necessarily need like a Wacom tablet to do this so um, so as you can see what I'm doing I sort of started from the top as you can see so I started from the top and I've started kind of working my way down and then working back up to the top if you do it this way you can create a, a layering effect so um, you drag in the kind of the, the lighter grades up to the top and as you can see what starts to emerge is this kind of staggering effect where you can sort of start to see clouds in the distance and then as you sort of get closer you can see there's uh, sort of clouds kind of reaching up. So I'm not drawing clouds. I'm not uh, drawing. I'm drawing, but I'm not drawing, if you know what I mean. All I'm doing is I'm just sort of shifting pixels around, effectively, uh, to create the illusion of clouds. But again, if you don't have a pen tablet, you can um, do this with a mouse. So really... All I'm doing here is sort of put a bit of a background on there. This time around, I'm going to put like a, just a slight kind of uh, light gradient on there just to kind of give it a bit of color, a bit of atmosphere. Uh, you'll need to create another layer for this just to be on the safe side or not, depending on how you like to work. And you can see that it's a little bit strong. So I want to play around with the opacity. Take the opacity down because all you want it is a light wash. You know, less is more. Yeah, you don't want to overpower what you're painting. So I've kind of got that, I've got the colour, and you may spend a bit of time just kind of playing around with colours. Don't be satisfied with having one colour. And then for the bottom I'm just kind of putting this um, other gradient um, uh, below. And again, just kind of playing around. You will learn a lot by just messing around with this stuff. You know, perhaps even just don't have a purpose. When you first start using Photoshop, don't necessarily have a purpose. You know, just have a play around. So next I'm using the lasso tool. I'm just sort of creating a kind of mountainous scene. So this is going to form sort of part of the background. And then what I'm going to use is I'm going to use a sort of a, a darker kind of brown. Again, I might want to kind of just play around with the, um, uh, with the uh, opacity. And just kind of create this kind of uh, phasing of kind of going from dark to, to light. So as if this kind of scene has got kind of mist in it. It's very kind of misty, very kind of ethereal. So the whole, I don't really have an idea when I'm working on these things. What I tend to kind of do is uh, make it up as I go along effectively. Just see where your imagination takes you. Yeah. So I've done this uh, with the uh, lasso tool. I've made this kind of shape and then I'm using the smudge tool so again I've not used many tools so far and then just kind of creating these peaks that are off in the distance these are kind of soft kind of um, almost kind of fantasy type um, mountainous kind of peaks uh, you know think Lord of the Rings think the Hobbit you know think you know get into that kind of mindset you know I often say to my students you know um, they should try as they're kind of uh, painting Try imagining the sounds of that world. Try imagining, you know, the kind of wind blowing. Try imagine, you know, what the sounds might be, what the ambient sounds might be. This way, what you do is you sort of create a more kind of immersive experience uh, for yourself. And you are able to get a lot more out of what you're doing. So... All I'm doing here is I've got this in a separate layer and I'm just, again, like the background, I'm just sort of dragging these pixels around using the smudge tool. Um, when I'm doing stuff like what you can see here when I'm kind of doing the mountains and I'm creating these kind of, sort of almost like cascading kind of uh, clouds kind of coming down, um, I, I'm just kind of playing around. I'm just sort of seeing what, it, what things look like. Now granted, I've been painting for many, many years, many decades. So, in my mind's eye, I do kind of have a vague idea, but at the same time, uh, I'm just playing. You know, as you, you know, perhaps remember when you were a child, just kind of there with a bit of paper and a pen, just, you know, just drawing away, just drawing aimlessly, or what kind of comes into your imagination, not necessarily with purpose. So, with this uh, uh, part, I'm again, I've created another layer, and I'm just repeating the process, another gradient, but this time it's darker when uh, particularly when you're doing uh, a picture with an environment you've got to remember kind of three key things one is the background 
the midground and the foreground. Now generally, generally, the background will be lighter. The midground will be slightly darker and then the foreground will be a lot darker. And it creates this uh, artificial depth within the painting. And also it kind of mimics real life because of course light has to travel so if you ever look on like a, a sunny day or even like a, a you know a, a cloudy day, you look into the distance, objects are faint, and then when you kind of get to um, the uh, you know closer to you, as your view kind of draws closer towards you, objects come more into focus and they're, and they're a lot more dense. So with this, um, again, I'm just kind of put this darker kind of gradient, and I'm repeating the same step. So I'm using the smudge tool, and I'm lifting these kind of um, peaks up and again already at this stage you know it's quite it's quite effective and that's just using the smudge tool and the gradient tool so just put in a, a, a little kind of valley in here so we've got like a, a river just a suggestion of a river again no details I'm not putting rapids in there I'm not putting any kind of rocks in there I'm not even attempting to kind of create some sense of uh, ripples in water it's just a suggestion an impression uh, if you're sort of curious about um, um, artists, artist work, a good place to start, as well as looking at uh, other content art, is looking at the masters. You know, look at uh, you know uh, Degas, look at Turner, look at all these people, look at how they kind of created uh, their work, particularly the impressionists. You know, people who just made suggestions of landscapes. You can always get good ideas, so always stock yourself up with um, a lot of um, inspiration. So again, so I'm just really um, using a combination of smudge tool, using the brush tool, uh, playing around with the brush presets, brush shapes. Uh, it's one thing you should always have is like dynamics on the brush just so you can kind of give it a, a more organic feel. And um, yeah, and just keep alternating between these things. So again with here I've decided to kind of put some uh, atmospheric kind of mist cloud type stuff in there. So I've used a soft brush on there and uh, decided to kind of just put it in the corner just and see what happens. Play around with the brush size, uh, you can play around with the opacity and just kind of put it in there. You can see even there it just gives it a certain degree of realism and of atmosphere. Yeah, Gives it um, um, a feeling of immersion and again this isn't massively complicated you know uh, students can tend to really overcomplicate things uh, with the drawing you can actually achieve a lot less I'm not sure if it was a uh, uh, is a famous Chinese philosopher I'm not sure if it was Lao Tzu I think I'm pronouncing that correctly who said in the Tao Te Ching you know um, a great tailor uses little cloth, yeah? The same rules apply here. You don't have to put a lot in there to uh, get good results. And the same could be said with a lot of things, even in cooking, yeah? You know, you could use very few ingredients to create something that's kind of, you know, very sort of tasty looking. So, um, what I've done here is, as you can see, we've got the background, we've got the um, mid-ground, and now we've got the foreground. You can see that I've used the uh, lasso tool there again, uh, to create the foreground and this time I've gone in really dark so I've created uh, a really dark um, looking foreground so already even without uh, a figure in it you can see there's um, um, uh, depth yeah there's a sense of depth you know your focus is now at the front so you can see I'm just kind of, again, just using the, using the smudge tool again, just to kind of, um, uh, again, soften this up, make it, uh, give it some sort of shape. But you can see your focus is there at the front, and you've got the background. So it acts as this kind of contrast. You need a kind of dynamism when you when you create an environment, so whatever you're doing. So, and just to, again, recap, all I've been using uh, is the gradient tool, smudge tool, and brush tool. Yeah, I've been playing around with some of the settings. I've been playing around with the opacities, with the uh, with the brushes, with the gradients, and the strength with the uh, smudge tool. And as you see, like with the smudge tool, I tend to kind of stay around the 80s mark. 
simply because I can kind of create this kind of quite nice kind of smudging effects. If you use a lower uh, gradient, uh, sorry, a, a lower strength with your um, smudge tool, it can just kind of just slowly kind of pull the pixels apart and you don't really get that nice kind of um, smudging effect. So I've created this kind of scene and it's getting close to kind of being where I want it to be and before long I'm going to start thinking about uh, maybe just doing a little bit of tweaking so as you would do once you've kind of done the basics once you've kind of got the general stuff in you want to kind of then put some kind of figure in there to at least create a sense of scale so again I've done this with the uh, lasso tool I've just created a basic kind of human shape um, using the gradient so it's not entirely solid yeah and then I'll be coming in soon uh, after I've kind of played around a bit with the uh, with the smudge tool, change the size, and then I'll just start really painting with what I've done, just kind of moving the pixels around, kind of imagining with this silhouette what form it's going to take. And it's still at this stage, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm just really letting my hand um, guide me, yeah, uh, just letting it, just seeing where it goes. I've done quite a few pictures like this, so I always tend to default to some mystical type character um, holding a staff, looking out, you know, over the valley, you know. But of course, you can put in what you what you like. I've just kind of put it in here just to really as an example. So, looking at um, you know, looking at reference and things like that can help, but also just using your imagination, just seeing where it takes you, because, uh, you know, it can take you into some very interesting areas uh, that you perhaps wouldn't have thought of. You know, once you're kind of relaxed and you're just kind of playing around, uh, you'd be surprised what you create if you can just um, just have a bit of fun, really. Have a bit of fun, have a bit of purpose, but not too much purpose, and just see where it takes you. So... Yeah, so basically, sort of getting to the final stages of this this now, I did um, um, uh, carry on a little bit with this um, uh, painting um, after the video finishes, and I'll I'll put a still of the finished uh, character. I kind of put like another character by his side uh, again, you know, just to kind of suggest that these two people have sort of been on some kind of journey and they they've reached an area, you know, in the story. So again, you know, this kind of immersive element, you know, where you kind of thinking of things in terms of story you know of what's the story behind them yeah so it kind of ends with me just kind of putting a few finishing touches to uh, to the painting and then we'll uh, finally put that there so eventually uh, we'll fade out to um, uh, the finished painting so as you'll see with the finished painting really all that's kind of changed is uh, I've tweaked a few bits and bobs and we've got um, another character by uh, by the other character, so just the two of them, just to kind of balance it up, and just to kind of again give it this kind of uh, fantasy type uh, feel. Uh, the other characters like this, some kind of giant, you know. Again, you know, just to just a, a bit of contrast. If there's a a key word that uh, I can give you with this is contrast. Yeah, create contrast. As long as you're kind of creating contrast with uh, background, mid-ground, foreground, and also with characters, you know, nearer to, you know, to the, to the, uh, you know, close to the viewer, and some away from the viewer as well, it's all good, yeah, because you kind of, uh, you're creating a kind of dynamism uh, within, within your painting. Anyway, um, that's pretty much it. So thanks for, uh, uh, thanks for watching. Hope the video was helpful for you, and uh, as I said, I will be producing some more view uh, videos in uh, due course but um but that's it uh thanks for watching and um yeah stay tuned that's it. bye